Thank you so much. Um, it has been an honor and a privilege of a lifetime for me personally to work at this wonderful company and to have such an impact on the globe. It's humbling, it's a privilege, and I just wanted to say thank you. I always start off meeting trying to tell you what we do, and then I realize you already know. So, but I will say um, at Zoom, our mission is to eliminate friction and provide limitless human connection. And we do this through a platform that is more than just meetings. Most of you have been in our meetings, but what you don't know is that we have an entire platform that includes the meetings, um, what we call Zoom Team Chat that integrates seamlessly with our meetings, Zoom Phone, Contact Center. We have verticalized offerings for the financial services, healthcare, um, you know, sales space, et cetera. And we find that we do this to make human beings connect with each other and be much more productive. And how does this connection happen? It happens in many different ways. You know, we might be thinking at this World's Government Summit that we're having, talking about business meetings, but it could be the doctor connecting with a re remote rural patient all over the United States and frankly, all over the world. It happens when students take classes. If they're a single mother and they can't get to the university on time, it could happen that way. It could happen when you're sitting in China taking an English language lesson from a teacher in the United States. It happens when we talk with relatives and friends across different countries. I once, you know, during the pandemic, my son's tennis teacher is Irish and she, I thought I hadn't paid for the lesson. She flagged me down in the car and all she wanted to tell me was that hey, her special needs brother who had never been able to participate in family activities was leading Zoom meetings because of our live translation and transcription capabilities. He was hard of hearing and he could not, you know, he could not read lips. Most people assume that, you know, deaf people cannot, can read lips, but they cannot. Some of them cannot. And so she said our live transcription and, you know, translation features helped him sort of participate and lead family meetings. Those are the types of connections that we make. And of course, Zoom also powers connections at work. The way we have worked across the globe has changed irreversibly over the last few years. And we at Zoom and organizations that you are all a part of are all trying to work out what does work mean? Our goal at Zoom is to enable people to work seamlessly, flexibly, and productiv productively. And the whole goal for us is to increase happiness across the globe. There are three topics I want to discuss today. The first is, where is society in this idea of flexible work? The second is what we're seeing is the benefits to flexible styles of working. And the third is what can governments do to maximize benefits for their people for this flexible work? Well, we all know that flexible work, to some extent, is here to stay. One survey in the United States found that nearly two-thirds of employees continue to work remotely at least part of the time. And I will tell you from my own experience, I am the COO of a billion-dollar, multi-billion-dollar company. And if you asked my 12-year-old son if he sees his mom, even though during the pandemic I worked 16 hours a day, seven days a week, I kid you not, in fact, my husband did ask him that, do you, do, do, do you miss mom when she goes to work? And he says, what are you talking about? She's always here. So I would say while hybrid form of work is most common in knowledge working situations like my own, we're seeing work flexibility grow across industries from forestry to building maintenance and to healthcare. 58% of organizations that employ frontline workers, you're talking healthcare, retail, even you know, sort of truck rolls from Exxon and AT&T, have invested in improving their experiences of their, those frontline workers in the past year, offering greater flexibility and increasing paid leave. We know that specific approaches to work depend on national culture and policy priorities, and employees around the world support flexible ways of working. Here in the UAE, 70% of Gen Z workers, which also make up quarter of all UAE employees, noted a preference for flex flexible work arrangements. And finally, we know that across ages, across industries, across countries and cultures, flexible work arrangements provide multiple benefits. 
I'm going to list out six of them. My typical rule is nothing more than three, but the team really wanted me to talk about six, and I can't really cut any of them because they are benefits. Number one, flexible work helps to drive economic development outside of urban areas, especially in areas where they need it most. We recently partnered with an employment website, Indeed, and together we found that across the globe, suburb suburban job growth is on the rise. The United States, the UK, and Ireland have seen significant job growth outside of their expensive urban cores. And in Germany and France, jobs offered on a flexible basis rose almost four times as their in-person counterparts from January 19th to September 2022, 20, and that trend has stayed. This is a really big deal. Flexible work means more people can have job opportunities and afford housing outside of the big cities. The second benefit is that flexible work provides women and caregivers with greater opportunities to remain in the workforce. We'd like to say that the, the, the playing field is level, it is not. And if what we can do to make that playing field a little bit more level, I'm all for it. In Scotland, the female employment rate reached a record high in October 22 because of the rise in flexible work. And in India, where female participation in the workforce was 25% in 2021, and mind you, that is half of the participation of the male workforce, 70% of female workers said they would consider leaving employees with flexible working policies. We heard from the last panel, the distinguished person in the middle, talk about how the gaps are wider. You're not counted. Non-traditional ways of working are just not part of the data set. Well, this is an example where we can get that non-traditional part of the way of working into the data set. The third benefit is that flexible work helps people bring people with disabilities and chronic illnesses back into the workforce. For example, a 2023 UK survey found that 42% of companies with hybrid working arrangements said the flexibility had helped them to hire people with disabilities. I have a cousin who is autistic and he is holding, he's 35 years old and he needs help. But because of Zoom, he's been able to provide and, and keep down a job in the, during the pandemic. The fourth benefit is that flexible work arrangements allow companies of all sizes to attract and retain talent. The, the great war for talent continues as economies, ec economics goes up and down, that stays the same. 60% of small and mid-sized business CEOs are offering remote work options in order to attract and retain top talent. 70% of UK employers polled in a 2023 survey indicated that offering flexible work arrangements and had made hiring easier. 77% of these said it boosted their staff retention. We all wanna keep the best people we've got. We know it's very expensive to lose skilled workers, even more expensive to, get, to hire them back. The fifth benefit of flexible work is the environment. The reduction of commuting time and other non-essential travel has helped reduce carbon emissions and air pollution. In Indonesia, the governor of Jakarta ordered half of all civil servants to work from home from August to October last year to combat air pollution. The sixth benefit to flexible work arrangements is to workers' physical and mental health. You have less commuting time, and then there's more time for sleep and exercise. I don't know about you, but there is so much focus on our well-being focused on sleep. And when you can take out two hours of a long commute, you have more time for rest and more time to exercise. We know that countries around the world are embracing these new types of work. And we know that we just talked about flexible work having all sorts of benefits for people and communities. So what can governments do to support these flexible work initiatives and maximize their benefits? This is the World Government Summit after all. This is a question we have to explore. At Zoom, we've identified five specific things that governments can do to provide more for flexible work. Governments should establish strategies to align new approaches of working with other national objectives. It always helps when you can accomplish two things with one. 
Ireland's remote working strategy aimed for 20% of all public sector employees to be fully remote by 2021 to promote rural economic development. The strategy delivers this with a combination of tax incentives, remote working legislation, infrastructure and guidance for employers in both the public and private sectors. Second, I don't think I need to tell the UAE this, but governments should invest in digital infrastructure, such as broadband connectivity, co-working hubs, and digital literacy programs, all of which directly contribute to economic development, particularly outside of major cities, and by definition, that's more inclusive. There are several ministries in the UAE here focused on digital transformation, for example. And in India, the state of Andhra Pradesh instituted a work from hometown initiative setting up co-working spaces in smaller cities by repurposing existing unused government infrastructure. These are just buildings that are sitting there, not getting used, and co-locating them with academic and professional development institutions. Third, governments should establish rights and protections for different styles of work to help ensure non-discriminatory treatment of workers. In Singapore, for example, a working group comprising the government, employers, and unions is developing guidelines around flexible work that will be released very soon. And among other protections, it will ensure that flexible work is treated fairly, and those kinds of work re requests are properly considered. Fourth, governments can leverage financial incentives to encourage flexible work arrangements, which can allow startups and other small firms that don't really need a lot of office space per se, especially outside of major cities to thrive. In Ireland, a combination of tax incentives and public su subsidies have seen a network of nearly 400 accessible community co-working spaces spring up across the country in just three years, including in remote and rural communities. And if, you, if any government has that type of innovation hub, Zoom is happy, happy to power them. Finally, national governments should strive to ensure that their laws and regulations around how people work are as consistent and as, as aligned as possible, both within the borders and outside of the borders. And this is extremely important. Aligning policies like professional licensing, such as strong and consistent data privacy protections, they are really required for a higher flexibility in a global workforce. So, I think I've talked a lot about the benefits of flexible work and how governments can be involved. Um, we believe that work has changed forever. As I said, I personally and Zoom as a company have been so privileged to support the people and organizations around the world as they've navigated through some of these challenges and now opportunities. What happens in the next several years will be even more important in deciding how we can make these new approaches work for all of us. We companies like Zoom have a very important role to play in delivering technology and support the organizations across the globe in this endeavor. And governments also have an important role to play in creating the conditions for all people, women, minorities, youth, approach economic vitality with these flexible ways of working. We all have to work hard and we have to work together. Thank you so much.